The massacre in Las Vegas reigniting the debate over whether or not to hold gun shows in buildings owned by Westchester County. Westchester had held a gun show at the publicly owned County Center building in White Plains back in January, the first since the massacre in Newtown. Another reportedly scheduled and is being promoted for this coming January, though the county says the contracts have yet to be signed. Now, back in January, county legislators, they passed a ban on gun shows in county-owned buildings, but the county exec, Rob Astorino, he vetoed that bill. Now, lawmakers and Astorino's Democratic challenger next month um, Senator, State Senator George Latimer, they are calling for a vote to override the veto. The most single important thing is that we make a commitment to uh, terminate having these gun shows at the Westchester County Center. We're not saying that they can't be held in Westchester. We just don't want to have them at a public facility and give sort of the public endorsement of these things. To equate the 8,000 law-abiding citizens of Westchester who came to the gun show here with a complete psychopathic madman intent on killing as many people as possible is just utterly awful. Andrew, why did um, why did the county executive want to relitigate this fight again? Could have made it. He cool. didn't. It's Democrats who are forcing his hand on this by pushing for an override vote. No, but of they the could have not back welcomed to have another gun show to come. Uh, well, I, keep in mind, Rob Astorino was the 2014 Republican nominee for governor. He, I suspect, would like to be the 2018 Republican nominee for governor. And so he's, you know, being accommodating to gun rights is a, uh, a welcome Republican position, particularly for somebody looking for statewide office. I guess my point is, why not, if you're him, just purely politics for a moment, try and do it at, no. towards the end of 2017. Andrew nailed it, because the Republican Party's caught in this terrible bind. To win a primary, you have to be to the right... <coughs> on gun issues. To win for county executive, not so much. Um, this is a legitimate political move by the Democrats to highlight what is their great hope for this election, that they can paint Astorino as a hard right-wing Trumpite and therefore motivate their base. They're not going to change anybody's mind on the gun show issue, but they can stir up the Democratic base to come out and vote. And they're also not going to win the override vote either. They're not, they would have to get one Republican to change the, his or Charlie, do you think on issues like this, and again, I, I, I want to clarify, you worked as advisor in the 2014 campaign uh, uh, for Governor Cuomo. Do the voters, aren't they kind of baked in their positions already on this? Or is this an issue that for the independent voter or the voter only really cares about property taxes on a county level will make yeah. up, will change their mind one way or the Look, other? Look, this is... Like twice. twice. I know. Don't do twice. it. Don't do uh, it. I'm not going to do it. Track. I, yeah. I don't agree with Richard. Thank you. Actually, <laughs> Richard agrees with me. Yeah. That's how we spin this. <laughs> Boy, when I ran for office, I wish I had been this smart then. I wouldn't even be here now. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is that there is a lot of energy now. Uh, there's a lot of emotion, and this is a hot button issue. Uh, and uh, uh, I have it exactly right, Richard, thank you for recognizing that, is that um, people are looking at issues like this. And you might e actually <coughs> even get uh, a Republican coming out on this because there is a lot of groundswell on issues like this. When you look at what's going on in Las Vegas, um, people are shocked at why we're not getting to some of the more common sense issues like this. And I don't know all of the politics in Westchester, but you might have a marginal Republican mm. sitting where you've got like a 60-40 or 55-45 district saying this could be this could be an issue that could be make it a little uncomfortable for Th them. There's one other reason why this plays better than just and it's not just baked in because it's the government's active role in the process hosting the gun show. Exactly. It's not it's not just whether we should have gun shows or not or what the position on guns is. It's the county facilitating the process. Mm. You mentioned Republicans. Well, a New York Republican that uh, might be familiar to many, Michael Grimm, he's trying to win back his old congressional seat representing Staten Island. Republican left Congress after pleading guilty to tax fraud and spending seven months in a federal <clears throat> prison. Grimm, he will take on Congressman Dan Donovan in the GOP primary, and the winner, they'll try to retain the last Republican seat in New York City. Grimm just received support from Steve Bannon, Former chief White House strategist is in his corner, and Grimm tweeted out this photo with a caption, Game on, but isn't a mixed blessing. And, and Dominic, um, we all remember his fall from grace. There was the criminal, but also there was the video captured of him throwing or threatening to throw one of your old colleagues after breaking him in half off the balcony. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> but my point is, <laughs> we pour dirt on a lot of politicians, sometimes prematurely. Yeah. Um, in this particular case, 
Donovan's kind of popular, he, and Grimm is really damaged goods. People still don't know how he paid back more than a half a million bucks in an outstanding debt. Um, is he a real challenge, you think? Yes. Donovan is formidable, liked in the district, but Michael Grimm is someone, people don't like to admit this. He's got the look, he's got the sound, and he's especially got the look <clears throat> and the sound to represent that district. <clears throat> so it's a long shot challenge at best. <clears throat> Excuse me, but everybody loves a comeback story. And I, if I was Donovan, I would not sleep on Michael Grimm. The, the big cynic, the big everybody's corrupt guy. Right. Cutting Michael Grimm no, no, some I didn't slack. Say, I didn't say everybody's corrupt. I said politicians in Albany I are corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah. Get that to the governor, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I don't think this is serious. Not because of Grimm. Mm but because Donovan is well anchored in that district. Mm. Three or four time DA and, and, a, and, and is secure. Whether Grimm can activate enough disaffected Republicans to make it easier for a Democrat to beat Donovan, mm. it's rarefied. I'm, I'm well, trying to think of any issues that issue. Donovan has strayed from the Republican reservation uh, so oh. far, and it's health care. He voted, he would not go on board with health care, particularly with uh, the Faso Collins Amendment, which would have hurt New and York City. And he hasn't thrown his arms so, around the president at every turn, but neither has Grimm. Grimm's been on the set since he got out, and he's also taking issue with some of the things the president But he's going to have to make the argument that somehow Donovan's not Republican enough for the people of Staten Island and the little slice of mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Uh, and it'll be fascinating to see how he tries to prosecute that Charlie, case. The Bannon factor here. I mean, we're talking New York City. I know it's Richmond County, but still New York City. Do you think Bannon can play outside of really red, red districts? Now, I'm gonna say something that's gonna be actually contradictory, right? Uh, on the one hand, it seems laughable that this guy was, was, was at Trump's swearing in, uh, standing inside the White House, advising the leader of the free world, and, and, and his candidate for Congress was probably watching it on a black and white set in an orange jumpsuit and now he's running for Congress. And all of us are sitting here yucking it up saying how ridiculous this is. And now he's gonna run for Congress in New York City and how ridiculous that is, right? And we're yucking it up and we're so smart. But I'm telling you, on the other hand, there is a core of people who believe in this message and we are the idiots who are going to look like seven months from now and it's gonna be a real race because there will be a genuineness to this race and Bannon is the real deal. And those of us on the even left- in, Even in Staten Island. Even in Staten Island. Those of us who are so smug, who couldn't believe that Trump could win, who just dismiss all of this stuff, and we do it over and over again, have got to recognize that there's a real genuineness to this kind of stuff that we got to take it for As real. Will Bannon, Bannon, will Bannon show up in Staten Island? If he did, uh, he probably will not, but if he did, it would create an electricity within that group that we would dismiss, and it would, I'm telling Charlie's you. Charlie's general theory is not a bad one. You're underestimating Donovan's Republican credentials. He's homegrown, he's well-liked, there's no reason to dump him. I, I, and I agree with everything you just said, but there's just something about this that we just, we just, uh, we just dismissed this hey, little I gotta admit, I've been wrong before on these things, but I think it'll be a lose. major upside. Oh, <laughs> no, please. And you better stop agreeing with Richard. All right, coming up next. Richard's got to stop We stay in New me. York, yes. Will he or won't he? Will Andrew Cuomo run for president? Well, the first governor of Cuomo famously dragged out his decision before deciding in the end against it. What will the current governor do? And what kind of tells can we learn in the next year?